This is a slab taken through a cadaver, human cadaver. And it shows um, a section that includes cerebral cortex, which is all of this stuff out here. Cerebral and on the other side, of course, that's that's the key first principle to establish, and that is the brain is bilaterally symmetric, and what you see on one side you will see on the other. Cortex means bark, and we don't mean the bark of a dog here, we mean the bark of a tree. So this is the outer most element of the most of the human brain, and so it's called cortex for that reason. You notice it's composed of a lot of gray matter. That's all this stuff here. But then on the inside. You see a lot of white matter. It's all this stuff here. And I want you to look in particular at white matter that starts here in cortex, makes its way down here. That's one continuous. In fact, yeah, let's just paint a cell body in here for fun. Cell body here, axon that makes its way all the way down to the spinal cord is going to be down here. So this is the corticospinal tract. And the axons of the corticospinal tract enter the white matter beneath cerebral cortex and then make their way through the midbrain and all the way through the pons into the medulla and then finally in the spinal cord. The axons are going to cross over here where the spinal cord and medulla meet and they're going to go to the other side of the spinal cord. At least most of them will. So the point is this one fiber tract goes for one great distance. And we're going to name it different things along the way. So what we call these same axons as they make their way down into spinal cord is going to change because in each one of these levels here and here and here and finally here, we're going to find that they're joined together with other axons that terminate in other places. And so the names of the tract changes along the way. In the end, it's all the corticospinal tract. It's just parts of larger entities that are given different names as we go from telencephalon to spinal cord. The other thing to notice is that uh, you can see gray matter not only on the outside, not only in cortex, all of this stuff, but you can see it here. In fact, look on either side of the midbrain. This is what the midbrain is right here. Uh, what have you got? Collections of neurons that look dark, and they are. It's called the substantia nigra. Substantia nigra is a nucleus. It's a collection of cell bodies. And about half the cell bodies contain the neurotransmitter dopamine. And a side branch of a synthetic path that leads to dopamine leads to the reduction of melanin. And melanin pigment granules get trapped in those neurons. So long, it doesn't kill them. And as long as the neurons are healthy, they look dark. Substantia nigra means black substance. And for good reason, those neurons are dark. Number two here is the thalamus. And so the key element to thalamus that's important is it is the gateway for all discriminative information that makes it into cerebral cortex. And we're, and we're going to find in thalamus then collections of neurons called nuclei that send their axons to specific regions of cortex called cortical areas. So that, in a nutshell, is the basic organization of, uh, of the nervous system. Collections of neurons, cell bodies, collections of axons. The cell bodies, their dendrites, synapses, or gray matter. That can be cortex, or it can be nuclei. And collections of axons, myelinated ones, or white matter. So many of those tracks extend for great distances, very, very long distances. Whereas the nuclei, these guys like the substantia nigra, are really well confined, no more than a centimeter in any one dimension.